Hi, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me this evening. Boy, it's been a while, hasn't it? And just as usual, a little bit of craziness here. Um, but I guess I'm getting used to it. What can I say? Tonight's project is going to be using the jack o' lantern transfer and actually our pumpkin or gourd cutouts. And let me show you them. This is the jack o' lantern transfer. But let me take these out of the package and show you these adorable cutouts. And yes, they are a holdover from last year. So you might have seen some things done with them last year. We've got some cool new things for this year. But let me just show you these adorable pumpkins. They're MDF and they're whitewashed. Obviously double-sided. And they come three in a pack. I think the last one out of here. Here we go. And they're quite substantial. They look lovely grouped together. Or even individually. I'll get you the measurements in a set. The small one is five by four and a half with the stem. The medium is seven and a half by seven with the stem and the tall more gourd like one is 10 by six so they make a nice little combo and we're going to i guess i'm going to and isn't that funny i didn't realize i'm casting a shadow let me fix that Drop me a line, let me know where you're watching from. I'm coming at you from the suburbs west of Chicago. And I'm going to try and put the other light on without knocking over my stand with my laptop. And hopefully this will be a little bit better. I didn't realize I kind of changed how I normally do my lives or where I do them. And um, didn't realize that I was casting when it's this late in the evening casting such a dark, such a shadow. Anyway, so these are the, the surfaces that I'm going to use tonight. And what I'm going to do tonight is going to use the jack-o'-lantern pattern with our transfers. And then I'm going to use um, our henna pumpkin patterns on the opposite side. So I'll have one side that's perfect for Halloween. And then I'll have the opposite side that works great for um, Thanksgiving or basically for fall. So that's the game plan with that. And I'm going to do a little bit of painting. And mix up some colors in my little color trays. So we're going to have some fun. Drop me a line. Let me know where you're watching from. If you have any questions, feel free to just jump on in. I'm always open to any um questions, suggestions, whatever. And I'm going to try and straighten myself out. I realize I'm a little bit crooked here, which I guess it was a little too dark for me to realize I was crooked. Hopefully that'll straighten things out a bit. Did I overcompensate a little bit? So I pulled a bunch of different colors. I have our rust, our orange peel, and then um, sunset drive. And I think these are nice colors for these pumpkins, gourds, whatever. And I probably will do a little bit mixing and matching to get the exact shades that I want. Just grabbing some stir sticks over here. And I think I'm going to start with the orange. And just throw some in my color tray. Oops, let me stir that up a little bit. Put some in my color tray. And then I think I'm going to um, darken this up a little bit. I don't think I want it quite as bright as it is. So I'm grabbing my bark paste, which I haven't used in a long time. Ah, haven't used in a long time because it is a new jar. I have an old jar sitting around here somewhere. Let me just get this open. And scoop some of that paste back into the jar. 
I realize I'm off camera a little bit. Let me scoot that up there. There we go. I don't want to throw all that paste away there. This seems a little dry. I'm going to have to stir it up. Probably was sitting on the lid. So let me stir that up. Dump this in the trash. You always want to pit your paste to be a consistency. Kathy doesn't know how to speak anymore. Consistency between yogurt and sour cream. Let me mix up what was on the lid. Got a little thick. <clears throat> I'm just going to add a little bit to my orange peel. Whoops, that was more than a little bit. I probably need to grab some more orange peel then. And I want to make sure that I don't go putting this back in my jar if I have any of the bark paste on it. Don't want to contaminate. There's my orange peel. Anyway, are you a person that decorates for Halloween? Do you do a little bit? Do you do like happy Halloween things or scary Halloween? What do you actually like? Let me know. I don't go too scary. Just a little bit. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of brown. A lot of the bark. We'll see how this turns out. Might need to add a little bit more orange again. Yeah, whoops, oops. There we go. Kathy's making a mess already. No one can ever, con con no one can ever accuse me of not being a messy crafter. I do make mistakes. I drop and spill all the time. But no problem, our chalk paste is water soluble, so cleanup is easy. One of the things I absolutely love about it. Let me get the paste off of my fingers and off of my surface right now. And then add a little bit more of orange peel back in there because it's a little bit too dark. You know, pumpkins aren't really a nice bright orange generally. So I wanted something a little bit more realistic. So I'm just blending colors, which is kind of the fun of the chalk paste. You can mix and match. Add and subtract for your colors until you get the exact shade there you're really going for. So let me add a little bit more orange peel in here. And see where we're at. Yeah, that is kind of dark, isn't it? Okay. And once I've mixed up a color, if I really have a lot left over, I could put it in a little container and save it. For another use or what I like to do my favorite thing um, face oh boy this is still dark my favorite saving type thing is to um, save my used containers and when they're empty just wash them out and um, use that for any mixed up colors where I've got a substantial amount I'm going to be using these colors again on the other side when I do the henna pumpkins so this would really be worth saving and wow I really did put a lot of bark in there didn't I just I want to lighten it just a tad more and I am doing a little paste does go a long way but I am doing some rather large surface so I wanted a little bit more and I actually need oh, way way more than I need um, and I suppose if I wanted to lighten this up I could add a little dab of white Maybe to it. Or maybe actually, I think I'm going to let it go as it is because it seems like it might be just exactly what I'm looking for once it dries a bit. Let me cover up my orange peel and we'll get started with this. And I think I'm going to do the large gourd in this color. Now, when you, you can use our paste. Um, to work with our transfers, obviously. Our transfers are kind of like stencils. And you can use them um, to apply the paste through the stencil, or through, I'm sorry, using the stencil through the silk screen to your surface, or you can actually paint with them. And generally, if you're going to paint, I usually dis dissolve, delete, oh my goodness. I usually, 
can't think of the right word. Add a little bit of water so the paste is not, it's not straight paste. It makes it a little bit easier to glide on. Now I could add it to the surface. Oops, my spray bottle's not working. That's just great. I'm having a fun time here. I could add it to the surface that I'm painting on, just spritz a little water on there, or I could actually mix it in my paste, in my chalk paste, and I decided I'd go with putting it on the surface, and that didn't work out exactly like I was hoping, but let's see what this does. So I want it to go on nice and smoothly, which it is. You can see that kind of yellow undertone from the orange peel in there. But it is drying pretty quickly on me here, so I might just add a little bit of water to my paste in my little chalk tray and mix it up. To thin it down a little bit. And I still can't think of the word I was trying to think of that begins with a D. Whatever. It's been a long, kind of crazy, crazy day around here. So I'm not totally surprised by my inability to communicate effectively. What could I say? Ever have those type of days? I might need to do two coats on here. I'm not quite sure. And I think I'm going to do, do the little stem and a little bit of brown or green or whatever. But I want to get the streaks out of this and get good coverage. And then I'll probably set this aside and go on to another one. Kind of the fun of the chalk paste is being able to paint with it. That means your surface is always coordinated to your other colors. It's not like you're trying to mix and match acrylic paint with the paste. So that's kind of cool. I like painting with our paste. Oh, I'm being a little heavy handed there. Let me try and straighten this out a little bit. There we go. It's much better. And I'm just going to get the top. Yeah, I think I'm going to put a second coat on this. But in the meantime, I'll set this aside to dry as it is. And it's a little streaky, but I don't want a real even color because basically, let's face it, our vegetables are not really one flat, even color. Okay. Not perfect, but it'll work for right now, at least for the first coat. Let me set this aside. And I think I'm going to do... I think I want the other one to be kind of a rust. You know, a little bit darker, maybe? We'll see. This is another new paste, so... Let me take the lid off. We have such beautiful paste colors. They really are. Still coming up with some ideas for our paste that was on special. I think it was last month, and of course I can't think of the name of it, but it's this beautiful... Um, deep poppy color in a shimmer it's like oh my goodness could you ask for anything nicer oh this is kind of nice okay let me spritz this other pumpkin and get going with that i'm not going to wash my brush i'll just kind of go with it and it'll kind of put the other color with it a little bit of blending yeah i did something with my sprayer this isn't quite right so whatever we'll work with it Kind of getting the water all over it. And then I'll add a dab of rust.
can do a little mix in. This might be a little bit too thin, but that's okay. We'll see what it looks like. Don't like it? Just paint right over it again. Why not, right? Part of the fun of crafting. You get to make it the way you like it. Go with what appeals to you. Think out of the side of the out of the box sometimes is kind of fun. I probably do better mixing my water with my paste in my chalk tray than doing it on the surface because I'm having a little bit of an issue here, but that's okay. Because I'm gonna do a second coat and kind of even things out a little bit. Does anyone remember these from last year when I was doing the ones that looked like wood? Playing around with the brown and getting a wood grain? I thought those turned out pretty cool. Put the top up there and then I'll go back and get my stem with something else. Honestly, I think I like doing this much more than I like carving jack-o'-lanterns. It is definitely not as messy, and um, I think it gives much more variety of what you can do or not do. Excuse me for one moment. Oh, I thought she was getting up. Art. I heard the chair. <laughs> I just added new bells to mom's chair today. Um, somewhere we lost her bells and I just like to know if she's getting up and on the move so that I make sure her bricks are on and everything is cool. And didn't realize it wasn't mom, it's my brother. I'm like, okay. And I'm sleeping so I, that kind of startled me a little bit. Okay, so these actually look pretty pretty similar, don't they? Um, a little bit different. I think the second coats will make a big difference. I'm going to actually lighten this one up quite a bit for the little pumpkin and uh, see what we come up with yet. Actually, I'm going to lighten it up with the Sunset Drive paste. I might just, maybe I'll do it in Sunset Drive. I love Sunset Drive, and it almost has more of a, like a peachy look to it, if you can see what I mean. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that up, and this actually got a little dry, so let me stir it up. If your paste gets too dry, add a little bit of distilled water, a spritz of distilled water to thin it down. And if it's too thin, just leave the cover off a little bit, and it will dry up. To the appropriate consistency, of course. So let me mix this up a little bit. I don't want it quite as light as sunset. But I didn't, I want more of a pinky look to it than the orange. Okay, this looks, I think, pretty good actually get a little bit of water and we'll get moving on that it really doesn't take too much too long to paint um and actually i have my dryer handy or do i dang it it's in the other room but i could just grab it real quick i'm sitting right near the outlet so i can use my dryer and dry these instead of having to wait Always having a problem that I'm not close enough to an outlet and stringing a extension cord. Okay. Art. Anyway, um, 
See how fast the painting of the pumpkins can be? Doesn't take too long at all here. Do you think I should make the stems more of a brown or should I make the stems more of a green? What do you think would be the most appropriate? I'm kind of on the fence. Or should I mix them up a little bit? What would you do? Let me know. Drop it in the comments and let me know what you're thinking. I'm going to make sure that I put the lid on the right container. Well, maybe this is the rust. Okay, I just got some sunset on it. Okay, let me go grab my dryer and I will be right back. Okay, let's get these babies dried and throw on another coat and see where we're at. I'm just plugging this in. <laughs> and unfortunately, our new dryers, our new heat gun, not heat guns, our dryer, have a little bit longer of a cord. I can, can't really reach to the table with this. I thought I was fine without an extension cord. But let me grab this by the stem and come over here and, and work on drying it. And then we'll put a second coat on and get into the fun stuff. Our dryers look like heat guns, but they're not. They're not that hot because you wouldn't want a heat gun around our stencil, our transfers, because it would actually melt the vinyl. Let me turn this up to high. It's a little bit warmer than cool air, if you will. How's the temps in your area? We're in the 60s today, which was kind of nice because it's been so hot for so long. It's kind of a break. Okay, the large gourd is almost dry, just the center's a little wet. Hit that a little bit more. And I really, what do we think? Should I go for more like a brown or a tan step? Tan step? Or do you think more of a green? You could just tell it's still a little bit wet in the center. I'm going to set this aside yet and dry the other ones and then come back to that. I might have just gotten a lot of paste on it. Okay, this middle one is almost dry too. Of course, I've got more paste on the left-hand side. I like to be in the middle of things just in case mom gets up or needs a snack or whatever. So that's why I'm at the kitchen table. But um, I'm actually encroaching on my dog's space right now and she's a little in panic mode. She doesn't particularly like the dryer.
And you can see how quickly the dryer dries the surface. Oh, I think the sunset, I think the small pumpkin has the prettiest color, actually, of all of them. It's dry. I'm still waiting for the large one to dry. I'm going to go with the second, the smallest again and just quickly give it a, a second coat. I need to add a little bit of water to my paste as it's dried a teeny bit, just a little bit. And we'll add the second coat and get moving on. Whoops. Oh. Sometimes I'm in too much of a hurry for my own good. What could I say? Okay, so. Scary or fun for Halloween? What do you think? I've seen some really kind of ghoulish things that are pretty cool that I'm tempted to do, but they're just generally not my style. Let me know what you think, and I'll kind of tailor I'll kind of tailor things to my audience. I'm happy to do that. Okay, this looks good. I like this color. What do you think? Let me clean my hands a little bit. I think I'm going to hit this large one again with uh, the dryer just to get the middle section. Yeah, it just seems a little wet. Hang on a sec for that, and we'll get it going. Now I could have left these, I mean obviously I did not have to paint them if I didn't want to. Obviously I wanted to. I was looking for some nice rich warm autumn colors. Just seems like everything's been a little bit slow here to um, to change because it had been so warm for so long. This is still pretty loose so I'm just going to paint it as it is. Just add my second layer on here real quick. And actually, my surface is a little warm from that dryer, so it's it's drying pretty quick as I add the paste. I'm going to try and keep that dark spot in the middle, kind of like a streak. So that I've got multi-colors in here. I don't want a flat color. And I'm using one of our paintbrush that's really great for putting on the paste. I really love them. We sell them as part of our toolkit. And then I think actually this is from um, one of our Christmas kits from last year that I had laying around. Okay, so anyway, oops, I kind of might have botched up that streak there, didn't I? I think I might have. Let me turn this around a little bit, kind of get it at the top. It's a little bit drier than I probably should be, but I think it'll work. There we go. I want to keep that streak most of it and get the rest of it covered. There we go. Oops, the top needs a teeny, teeny bit. I'll cover that with the green or the brown. Okay, so we've got our large board done. And let me check out our middle size one. I think I'm going to 
mix a little bit here. Make this a little bit lighter. I'm grabbing a little paste, mixing it with a sunset drive and adding a little bit of water because this almost looks a little too red to me. Okay, yeah, it'll tone it down quite a bit, but I want to keep some of the original streakiness there. Okay, I think this looks good. What do you think? It's a little streaky, a little bit dark, a little bit light. A little bit more of how things are in real life than a flat color. Okay, so let me go back to the dryer real quick and then we'll get our faces on these little pumpkins. And I just see a little oopsie here. Let me fix that up. Okay. The one thing you want to be careful with with using the dryer, and of course I just did it, is not to get too close when you're moving the dryer around and nick your pumpkin. And I just put a little nick in here. So let me kind of go over that with my chalk paste and see if I could hide that. Okay, I think, oops, oops, I'm really in a roll here, aren't I? Not fully dried and I'm kind of smearing it a little bit. I think that'll look fine. So you hit the small one. If I had room, I'd throw them all on my lap and dry them all at one time. It'd be a lot quicker. And I'm constantly moving my dryer around, not letting it stay in the same spot. 
just kind of dispersing the little heat that it throws. When you use your dryer, you always want to be sure before you do the next step, if there is a next step, there is a next step. To let your surface cool before you actually put some more paste or um, a transfer on it or anything like that. I'm going to actually clean my brush over here. Get a little cup of water and um, then work with the stem. Which, of course, I didn't bring another color tray out. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I can do without it and just see if I can wing it. Or I could actually use my surface, just a little extra cleanup. And I think I'm going to go, oh, that's the shimmer. I definitely didn't want shimmer. I think the jade, at least on my small. I must have grabbed all new paste tonight. What could I say? I'm pretty close to it. I'm going to use the jade for my small pumpkin. And we'll see how that looks. Of course, I didn't thin this down at all, but that's fine. I think it'll go fine with it. Okay, and that's dark enough. I don't need another color. And I think I'm going to use the jade on actually all of them. My brush was a little wet from rinsing it, so I'm just trying to get that paste on nice and even with a somewhat straight line there from the body, and then get the whole stem. There we go. Let me cover up my jade and show you what we're going to do with the rest of it. These are still a little wet. Of course, the stems are all wet, so I'm moving them over to the side so that I could clean my surface up. I have created a mess, Ava and I. I took out so many different color pastes because I wanted to do, I had so many ideas running through my head that I wasn't quite sure where I was going to be. And sometimes it's more fun than anything else because it gives you the variety to kind of go with whatever occurs to you. Now you might notice that I have a little bit of paste on the edges of these pumpkins. And I don't know quite yet if I'm going to paint the edges or not. I actually have used some like gold, um, not gold leaf, but uh, like a gold wax to... Um, do the edges before and I really kind of like them that way if I put a different color on the other side it doesn't look like it's uncoordinated it looks like it's in intentional and I could cover any drips or sand off any edges that I have that I inadvertently got paste on so let me clean this up I'm just using a little Lysol wipe Clorox wipe Lysol wipe whatever just to clean my surface I could use water in a paper towel because like I said our chalk paste is water soluble so that generally makes cleanup pretty easy whether on the surface or on your mat or actually on um, 
your transfers or stencils. Now all I have to do is figure out where I put that transfer. Here we go. So this is the transfer. It's called Jack-O-Lanterns, and there's basically three different designs. I already got paste on them. All of our transfers come in a little um, cellophane envelope. I'm going to open that up and take out the transfer. And then I like writing the name on the back for two reasons. First of all, it lets me know which backing goes to this transfer because the backing does peel off. And it also um, is a reminder to not stick the wrong side against the transfer. I'm cutting these across on the, I'm cutting them apart on the cut lines. You can see the white lines here. Our transfers are made of vinyl, which is the TO portion. I know my scissors have got paste all over them. Oh my goodness, what a mess. These are generally the scissors I use for opening up boxes and things. Um, so our transfers are made out of vinyl, which is the teal portion, and silk screen. And you're seeing through the silk screen here to the actual backing. So I'm going to just put jack-o-lantern on here. On the different pieces. And not only does it tell me which backer goes to which transfer, I mean, I could number these one, two, and three, but I think it's pretty easy to differentiate based on their size, so I don't think there's the necessity to do that. However, our transfers are adhesive backed, and you can see, here's the carrier sheet, one side shiny, which is a side that goes against the adhesive, and the other side is dull. And by writing the name of the transfer on the back, I don't accidentally put this side against the sticky side of the transfer. So it's just kind of, it identifies it, and then it stops you from making an oops. Because the shiny side is kind of like freezer paper and will not stick to the stickiness of the um, transfer. So I am going to grab a fuzzing cloth. I'm getting one step ahead of where I need to be. But I'm going to back up and explain something in a moment. So let me just grab this one. Sorry, got my little laptop on a stool and I just get I had to move it out of the way. Okay. I talked about what our transfers are made of. Now they can be used on lots of different surfaces. This is like an MDF product or a wood product. Our transfers can also be used on wood, glass, metal, mirror, cloth, canvas, ceramic. As long as it's somewhat of a smooth, I mean, smooth surface, you can use our transfers on it. And depending upon what surface you use, you need to fuzz more or less. And all fuzzing means is that you're going to take a cloth like this or a towel or something and deliberately apply lint to the back so the transfers are not as sticky as they would be. Now I'm going to do this on these MDF cutouts, the pumpkin cutouts, but if I was doing this on glass or mirror I would fuzz quite a bit because anytime you use it on a surface that is non-porous it sticks very tightly and you don't want it to stick so much that it's difficult to pull up or lift. So I just wanted to go over that a little bit. You get a feel for it. It really is not that big of a deal. Um, just want to make sure this is nice and dry. I've got to watch the jade that is not dry. But before I go and put a face on these little on this little pumpkin, I need to wax it. And what I'm going to do is apply some of our surface wax so that I put a seal on top of this paste. So when I put other wet paste on it, for whatever color I choose to do the face with, it doesn't dissolve this and loosen it and lift it up. So the paste at the wax, the surface wax, acts as a barrier. And this is our surface wax. It comes with this cute little container. Generally, it comes in a silver container. 
But with the pandemic and the shortages and, you know, all the craziness we've all had to endure, um, at some point all they, the company could get were the gold containers. So that's why this particular one is gold. Personally, I like the gold more than the silver, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The nice thing about our surface wax is it's in a small container, so it doesn't really dry out. I've never had one dry out on me yet before I finished using it. But also there's no fragrance, which is great. Sometimes some of this stuff could just about knock you out. So I'm just using a paper towel. I could actually use a little applicator if I wanted to. Of course, I didn't bring any out here. That's why I had to go snag some paper towel. So I'm putting some wax on my paper towel, and I'm just going to rub it in. I'm going to avoid the jade part up there because, you know, that paste is still wet. I'm going to rub it in, and then I'm going to rub it off. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to get right up there near the top because it is darkening in just a shade or so. And then use a circular motion and just rub the wax right off. And that'll act as a little bit of barrier. Sometimes I forget to do it, and it's fine. And sometimes I forget to do it, and I get a little bit of lifting of the paste that's underneath it. So anytime you're painting or um, using our paste as the paint, if you will, add a little bit of wax to it to act as a little bit of a shield so you don't lift the paste or the paint that's beneath it. And of course, you want to make sure your paste, I mean, your paint is dry before you do that. So I'm going to grab some more and do the medium pumpkin. I know I'm running a little bit late. My lives are usually not this long, but I wanted to show the whole process of painting each of these before adding the faces. Again, I'm just applying the wax. I'm getting a little bit of the paint that's lifting off. That's fine, no problem. I don't me miss my my jade paste there. I don't want to lift that up. And now I'm gonna just rub it off. You don't want any clumps of paste off. You want it to be smooth, and you'll feel it as you're kind of going over it. Yes, I'm getting a little color, a little bit of color, color lifting, but that's fine. And if this doesn't look right or it looks streaky or I don't like it, I could just sand it down and do it again. And sometimes I could just put paste right over the existing paste. No big deal. In essence, with a little bit of work, even though it's kind of like a wood surface, I could use the surface over and over again. Yeah, it's a little streaky, but I think it's fine. Okay, this is the one that I'm not quite sure if it's fully dry. It actually has a spot right here where you can see it's a little bit darker, so it's a little wet yet. I'm going to hit that with the dryer one more time, and then probably let it set and cool off while I work on putting the faces on these other two. So let me grab the dryer one more time. Now, if you remember, I went over this and put extra, um, added extra paste to it because I had smudged it. Now, that's why it's a little bit thicker in here. But I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and get on with my other two. Let's start with a tiny little pumpkin first. I'm going to grab the small pumpkin face, which is this one, and my fuzzing cloth, and let me show you how to fuzz. 
Our fuzzing towel has two sides. One's microfiber, the other side is cheery. You always fuzz on the cheery side. If you do not have a fuzzing cloth, you could use a towel, you could use your shirt, you could use a pair of jeans, anything that's gonna deliberately apply a little bit of lint to the surface so that it diminishes the, st the stickiness of it a bit. So you just apply it, lift it up, apply it, lift it up. I usually, I can't lift it up. <laughs> it's stuck so snugly. I usually fuzz like three times. It seems a little bit stickier than normal, so I'll do it a little bit more. Okay. And there, that's all there really is about um, fuzzing your transfer. Now I'm going to place it on my surface, and I'm going to try and get this pretty much centered. And now all I have to do is find my paste. And actually, I took our Shimmer Shadow Paste. Oh, I was, th I was thinking I was going to go black, but I'm pretty sure I pulled out the Shimmer Shadow here. Let me find it. Aha. Shimmer Shadow or Shimmer Paste have a little bit of shimmer to them. Not quite like, um, not quite like glitter, but I don't know if you could see this. This reminds me of uh, tar. A little bit but look at that shine and that shimmer from it I think the black really shows up well so I think this is a little bit nicer than the black um, just the flat black and it'll give it a little bit of a, a cool look and I just need to get a stir stick and get a squeegee that was my actually I was cleaning my squeegees in there so let me fish one out and dry it off Bear with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. My water's a little bit deeper in there than I expected, so I had my fingers stuck all the way in. Okay. Just cleaning off my squeegee. I didn't clean them off last time I used it, so shame on me, right? Sometimes I'm just anxious to get moving on things. So I'm going to stir this up. Add a little bit of paste to my surface. A little goes a long way. And then take my squeegee and go over the silk screen that you're seeing through to the orange of the pumpkin. Apply the paste. Smooth it out. Make sure I got everything. I have everything covered. Let me turn this around so I can pull it towards me because I still have some on the squeegee. Have everything covered. All my lines smoothed out. And any excess I would put back in the jar. I don't have much excess there. And then I'm going to lift up the transfer. And generally, I do that fairly slowly so that if I see a mistake, I can lay it down and fix it. Now, isn't this just the happiest little jack-o'-lantern you ever did see? Isn't it absolutely sweet? And I think that shimmer shadow is beautiful on it. What do you think? Hi, Deb, how you doing? Isn't he a sweet little jack-o'-lantern? Okay, I'm gonna put him aside to dry and I'm going to fuzz the transfer for the medium jack-o'-lantern. Remember, you wanna use your cherry side. This is the medium, this is the longer gourd or whatever. Now, when you apply your transfer, you want to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles or air pockets underneath your silk screen. And I'm going to bring this up so you can see, you can actually see through the silk screen. And a lot of our transfers are somewhat distressed, like you can see the little dots on here, which gives it a little bit of a distressed look. But on the other side, the positive side of that, I mean, that's intentional because if you do make a little oops, sometimes it's not noticeable with the distressing. A little bit more forgiving so let me put this on the medium one this looks like a pretty happy jack-o-lantern too doesn't it 
smooth it down, make sure there aren't any air bubbles under the silk screen. And just like before, add a little paste. Oops, get a lot of paste, whatever, and smooth it through the silk screen. And sometimes it helps to move your surface around so that you can get it from all angles. I have a lot of paste left on my squeegee. It looked like I didn't apply a lot, but it was actually stuck to the squeegee. So I'm just scraping it off there and getting everything covered. And then going over, removing my lines, removing the excess, and making sure everything looks good. Then I'm going to lift it off. And I'm going to check it as I go. Looks pretty good to me. These are happy little jack-o'-lanterns, don't you think? So I'll put this aside to dry. I'm running out of space because I have too many things on my table. Let me just stand it right up there and take a look at this one and see if this is dry yet. Okay. I've got a little bit of crumblies down here. Ideally, I would hit that with a little bit of um, a sander, but I'm not going to. Let me wax this one real quick. See, I almost forgot about waxing it. So just grab a little of my paste wax, rub it over it gently. Ooh, I've got a great big bunch that fell off. There we go. That's a little thick. I will definitely lighten that up. I'm just turning it around so I can get all angles. This one's kind of streaky. If I don't like it, I might distress it. I might adjust it when I'm all done. We'll see how it goes. This is one that I actually put too much paste on. If so, easy to fix. Like I said, make it to your taste, what you like. This one looks a little battered. And aren't sometimes pumpkins a little battered, dented, a little smushed, whatever, when you get them? A little bruised and bumped, I guess, is what I'm thinking. So I'm just removing the excess wax. I've got some wax up the side too. Yep, this poor little guy looks like he might have been through the mill a little bit. We'll put a nice happy face on him and make him smile. Let me fuzz my transfer. It's pretty much the same process. There are some other techniques, and I'll be showing you some cool things in some subsequent videos. I'm just applying a little bit of lint so that he doesn't it doesn't stick quite as snugly. Now I'm going to put it on the surface. And make sure that I don't have any air bubbles. And let's see, I'll move his face down a little bit. I don't want that straight. I'm actually lining it up with the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It actually is lined up right here with the bottom. Making sure everything's smooth. No air bubbles in here. If there's an air bubble, just lift it and smooth it back down. Because if there's an air bubble, your paste won't go through as evenly. And we want it to go through nice and smoothly. The beauty of our transfers using the um, silk screen is the silk screen, screen gives us a um, lovely definition as the paste goes through it. Nice, sharp, clear lettering and designs a lot of detail that you don't necessarily get with stencils or any vinyl that you have to weed. Truly using our transfers are so much easier than weeding and all the rest of it. 
sometimes I get spoiled. What could I say? Okay, so I've got everything covered. Let me smooth this out. Remove the excess. Yes, I have a lot of excess here. Put it back in the jar. A little bit more smoothing. Okay, I think it looks good. Let's do our peel and reveal. Remember, I'm going to peel slowly, making sure I don't have any oops. Like if I had missed a corner, this would be the time to lay it down and get it. Oh, yeah. This little guy doesn't care if he has streaks. Look at how happy he is. Look at that smile, right? So let's get these all lined up. Let me clean out my surface a little bit, get things out of the way. Throw that right back in my little water bath. Um, easiest place, easiest way to clean your transfers is to actually take them to the sink, run them under water, rinse off the chalk paste. If you rinse it off with your fingers, and I like to actually use one of our board erasers. And do I have a board eraser out here? I guess I didn't bring it out. Okay, it's just, it's kind of like a magic eraser type of thing, but the board eraser is really good at getting the paste off of the transfer. Now, obviously I've used dark pigmented paste here, so when I wash it, I'll make sure that the silk screen's very clean, but I'm probably gonna get, um, you know what? Let me just show you, why not, right? Move that out of the way. I'm gonna spritz this with a little bit of water. I think I've worn out my spritzer and I definitely know that I overfilled it. There we go. And if I had a water bath, I could put this in a little pool of water and show you, but truly the easiest way to clean them is at your sink with running water. And if you have a spray, so much the better. I use, um, actually I put my real large transfers in the tub, just put them on the tub wall and hit them with a spray and that works out pretty good. Now, obviously, this is deeply pigment, pigmented because it is black. So I'm going to need to do a little bit more, use a little bit more elbow grease to get this clean. And it's going to stain the outside of the transfer. But staining the transfer, staining the vinyl here, really does not impact the usability at all. So I want to make sure get it all clean. Clean my surface, flip it over, and now clean that he is upside. And the same thing, just basically take the paste off of it. Make sure the silk screen's clean. If you're ever not sure if the silk screen is clean enough, just put it up to a window or put it up to the light. If you can see through it, all the little squares of the silk screen, then you know you're fine. And then when I have all the paste off, I just kind of wipe in one direction to remove any of the lint that was deliberately applied. Oops, don't want to do that. So you get the lint off, and then you put your transfer somewhere to dry, so you can see through the silk screen. You put it somewhere to dry, sticky side up. I'm going to have to move this over a little bit. And once it's dry, then you put the shiny part of your carrier sheet against the sticky part. And then put them back in the cellophane wrapper for another use. Remember, they're reusable 8 to 12 times or more. So you can make quite a lot of pumpkins. You can make some for yourself. You can make them as gifts. Whatever you really want to do. Look at my nice, sweet little pumpkin family here. Let me get my paste out of the way and make a little bit room for this daddy of the pumpkins so how was that three pumpkins yes a little bit longer a little bit over an hour but I fiddled around doing a lot of painting um, obviously you could paint with acrylic you could paint one day and then put the faces on another day whatever but I really like using our paste for painting now I have to find a container for my excess paint put it away and do a little cleanup and I'm done. But like I said, our paste is water soluble. If you have something that is going to be washed, now I would dry dust these, I would not wash them. I would not use um, like Windex or anything. I'm just dry dust them. 
but if you are you have something that is going to be washed like a cup or a shirt a t-shirt or whatever then instead of using our paste you want to use our ink our ink is intended for permanence and for things that are can be washed and then once it's applied and heat set it is permanent so think ink for the permanent things chalk paste for anything that you might want to reuse over that or that is not going to be washed Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I surely do appreciate it. See you soon.